This station is from a stream to a flowing river. This station is growing bigger and bigger. This station is for all the garrison. No other station in comparison. The Badar station is everywhere. Even when you're shopping, you can these places Tesco, Lido, Sainsbury, and even Morrison, Jabon Station, no stress, no pain, and no haltication. Jabon Badon. <laughs> Shut up now man, you're a fucking idiot or what? You think the system just exists without individuals or and individuals without or the system is something that is living on its own? Are the people them were involved in that the rich white man them were of the business around the music industry, the, the film industry, the whole of them are the system. It's kind of retard you be boom Donovan, but you know no sense man. As well as a whole lot to do with religions so my people this one will be pretty pretty interested so you definitely want to stay tuned but before we get into the video you know it's a black power movement so definitely drop a like and subscribe and share to a friend or a family so they can be a part of the movement no my people let's take a walk death row by maria hector narrated by Jaboni, better known as the badass from Buzzwalk. 14. Inquiry. In our corner of Babylon, serious effort were given to preparing our approach. Individual and collective cases for representation before the commission of for the first time since the cops had laid a hand on our shoulder, we were afforded the opportunity of explaining and exploring the facts of our individual cases and the condition of our collective predicament without any antagonistic, bureaucratic and anky-panky red tapes. <clears throat> this time there would be no judges should should in ground wigs and legal hypo hypocrisy or any crown counsel to tell the jury what happened as if they were on the scene of the crime or any unlearned and inexperienced Borgoris jury to exercise their class intent on us. This time the fuck would be appreciated and fiction kick out. This time right or wrong, wrong would not be attached to our class status. If a man had a case, he had a chance. It was not unimportant that Dr. Bar Barrett, the head of the commission, was also chairman of the J Jamaica Council for Human Rights, and that the Reverend Nelson was the incumbent chairman of the Jamaica Council of Churches. In fact, it was because of their position in these national organizations that we had sent for them that night and recommend them to the Prime Minister for membership and the Commission. We wanted the truth to be exposed before the Jamaican Council for Human Rights and the Jamaican Council of Churches to be exposed 
in this commission report of the injustice, oppression, and denial of rights to the government, the people, the world, and the big shots in Parliament, Babylon that could unfeel in the machine of represent repression and perpetrate control would be forced, if any, because of the exposure to effort some measure of redress. In our preparation, we were assisted by attorney Ferdinand Johnson, Lanston Sibbles, Roy Taylor, made available by the Justice Council for Human Rights and the Kingston Legal Aid Clinic. For the first time, many of the youths on the row had a good rap with an attorney about their cases and were assured that their interests would supersede the habit of the cheap legal aid fee. It was an Thinkable that we and the law should manipula manipulate the commission exclusively with our predicament. The collective affli affliction of the prisoners in the yard could not go unmentioned. Being so irrelevant to our problem and the law, Indeed, the only fundamental differences in our plight was that while Babylon had chosen to hang us in a short and quick death, they were condemned to die slowly over a period of 10, 15, 20 years and terms of life imprisonment. All along, they risk brutality, loss of privilege, and transfer to help us along in our struggle. Now that an avenue of redress was here, they were entitled to a piece of the action. During daily discussion through the ventilators with these brothers, the need for an organized struggle group in the prison to keep the struggle alive and unify the prisoners around common objective under an organized system of struggle across. Again, history was made when at this point, you, Williamson, you go, yeah, when I'm a brethren. Olanda Wang, fire, now known as Oku Okoranda. Salute again, sir. Evan Gordon, George Russia, right. And Dennis Bart, Commander in Chief, Kappa. Better known as Peso, better known as P Bird. Harmonize with Winston Wright, Primo, salute again, sir. Alfonso Phipps, Donovan Chinqui, again. Let me stop for a minute there. Donovan Chinqui. Yeah, from down the south side, history again. Them claims that Donovan Chinqui killed the professor up a UA. That's part, that's why he was there. But Donovan was also underage. Now, history again. Cause my friend, I mean, I like to talk this story, you know, cause I tell you, say the book of Chiga of things, you know. When, listen this now. Donovan Chinqui got killed, right? But I'm going to tell you why he got killed. 
Kaina hiyo eno, dana, dana vanchi nkwiza hiyo uh, I weed, me I weed, I'm near, it does chiga off something you know, so I'm telling you what chiga off Cause my generation, that's all we did Create history Now, as you know The money was changed to, to dollars and cent I think 1969 something around there But then the first set of paper money when the money changed over the money where them call blood money which is the nada soul yeah the nada soul was where Merkel bank is here uh, where Merkel bank used to be that's where they build jamaica bank and they called that bank, it was named after Mr. Nada Soul. The biggest decimal money at the time was the $20 bill. Follow the ride. The day of the opening of that bank, when the Brinks bring the first set of Nada Soul. $20 bill. Donovan Chinqui and team went and took that. That's what, when we see Donovan name, that's what Kiki in my memory. That, that day there when the bank opened and the brings come with the blood money. Donovan Chinqui take that. Him and him team leave the bank, scat clean, and aid for T Tivale Garden. Down on the flowers, them go with the money. And after him go down on the flowers with the money, the next thing you know, Donovan disappear. The money disappear too. And Donovan turn up dead. We don't know. The circumstances behind that, but we know say him did take not a soul bank. So reading this book ever a chigaf. One of my brethren tell me say, Bunny, now go buy the book. But why me love how you read the book because through you did dip on the team. You are putting some little thing where Fed never put in. Because the man them now gone. And there's a few man still scattered around still. Not as brave as me because this is not their duty. This is my job to do this. Yes. Donovan Chinqui better known as Bugs. Winston Williams, better known as Maxman. I've been calling Maxman from last week and can't get through. And myself and the row to form the first organized struggle group in the penal system. <coughs> Alanda coined the name Paul. Hear the group name? Paul. P. U L L Prisoners United Liberation League Now no know where the group did name our, our appearance before the commission began with a itch we had organized a committee of five to represent our collective case and introduce the individual cases it was our agreement that all five should appear before the commission in one group with various points des designated to one or the other of us. More grounds could be covered in this way. The morning after the commission arrival at the prison, I was summoned to the superintendent office, arrived between to escort, I was brought before the commission 
and the cough remove after the familiar familiarities and Dr. Barnett explanation of the commission term of reference, I was invited to begin giving evidence. There was, that was not possible, I informed them, explaining our strategy of representation. I could not and would not go on without the others. After a brief adjournment that the others were sent for and began the ball rolling. The Barnet Commission of Inquiry was the most thorough and capable investigation ever made into the panel, penal system. It was also the most meticulously first a team of engineers from the Ministry of Works did a survey of the prison structure. Next, a sanitary survey of the prison compound was done by sanitation expert from the Ministry of Health. Thirdly, a psychosocial investigation and evaluation was done and all 26 of us on the row. Stimulatiously, the commission was conducting its sitting at the prison. The readers would be bored with a day-to-day -day account of the sitting. Surface it to say that the business of the commission rejuvenated certain social attitude within many of us that had long since gone into habitation and that as usual the boat went all right until Babylon rocket. After five years in prison very few people do maintain all of the social attitude included and in the outside world. I am not one of the few. A prisoner does not just get up and tell a goon good morning unless he is addressing him directly about something in particular. Now is it the habit of goons to wear their manners and the job? Going about the place telling cons good morning or any such pleasantries. And you just could not tell a fella can good morning. For it would be a downright lie. What the hell was good about morning after morning spent in the stink and squalor of death row? Gradually, the good morning, good day, and good evening disappear from my vocabulary. Please, sometimes the word is uttered more often to a fellow can than to the goons. Anything the goon delivered for our survival was dictated by the need to keep the body alive and the monster. Grandmother had said that manners take you through the world. That may be true, but prison is not a part of the normal, orderly, orderly world. Here it was only your self-determination and control, your kiss, or your conscious decision to become to be to become a fetch and carry lucky that get you through prison. The business of the commission brought us in close and regular contact with a wide cross section of people from the outside where manners 
and normal and married sometime good. In their present, one become immediately conscious of the need to slip back into that world. So it was that through our man morning were still not good. We were about to accord such social grace and pleasantry in our contact with these people of the world to which we had once belonged. Then Babylon rocked the boat. At the beginning of the second week in March, the grapevine came alive with the news that four prisoners on the row were to be executed. Immediately, feelers were sent in all directions in an effort to have something concrete to go on. Two days later, we received confirmation from an outside source. Four men were to hang, but we get no names. Panic run through the row like a whirlwind, and everybody was in a sweat. It would be futile to approach a commission on unproven facts. First, we need to know who the four were. On the 28th of March, we found out. After breakfast, an assistant superintendent and six goon came through the entrance. From the moment they enter the row, we all know what they were about. Amsalang door was open and he was escorted off the row. Next day came and Carlton Brian fell. The man produced a wicked looking knife and declared that he was not going on any gallows. If they wanted to kill him, he did rather die there in the cell than under gallows. Quickly the goon slammed shut his door and open Everton McFarlane's cell. After some hesitation, inspired by Brian Stan, he came out and was escorted away. The four to hang were Carlton Brian, Noel Amsalang, Everton McFarlane, and Errol Gale, an ex-cop. Minutes after they left, there came the excited shout and blast of whistle from the prison yard. Hurriedly, I jumped on my ventilator and was able to gather from the multitude of shout that Brian and Amsalan had broken away from the escort and were attempting to jump the wire fence that surrounding Gibraltar to get back inside the row. It was a run of desperation. Amsalang did not make it. He was dragged from the fence, mashed down by the goon, and hauled away to the death cell. As they hauled away Amsalang, I was wondering what was happening to McFarlane. After climbing over the fence, McFarlane ran into Gibraltar and was armed by the brothers downstairs. The goon working downstairs had run through the gate and those working on the row locked themselves in the cubics. At the end of the passage, overcome with panic, unexpectedly, McFarlane was on the roof. This drove three goon locked in the cubic into further panic. The roof held the only defect in the security of Colonel Megan death row. One could break a simple lock, open a steel trap door and drop in the passage. Realizing McFarlane's intention, the goon panic increased. They were unarmed. To run to the outside would mean they did have to pass the prisoners downstairs, who were by then in a rebellious mood, 
shouting insult and slogan at the goon. McFarlane broke the lock and was coming through the roof when the goon made up their mind. With a mighty rush, they run toward the gate, only to realize that the, the gateway was too small to accommodate them all stimulatiously. McFarlane came down on the passage as the goon now outside slammed shut the gate. And the row we call McFarlane, Fisherman, Bam, 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 Blood clap, my virgin, Fisherman, the pandemic, Why? No, Blood clap, Fisherman, from Rima, one of my youth virgin, when I used to step with Fisherman, you know what I say? The move the fisherman bring up was a good move because I never end. Blood clad star. The book I get mad. Yeah, fisherman. History. No, fisherman. I tell you one night. I stop this one, fisherman. All the while, I make fun of the Rima youth then. Because I like to do it. Billy Blanco, I tell him and him vex. But I now stop saying it because it happened. I always tell the man them say, Oh, I go down a Rima one night and take away all the gun them. Me alone take away all the gun them. This I'm the whole Rima. One Saturday night. So when I do that and when I say it, people are either going like, Cause it's too old. No, compare to when I do that. Cause I do this like 50 years ago. I do this. Yeah? Now, when I say it, say I'm going to ream and take away all the gun them. Them youth are nowadays who they met. Cause they have a whole heap of gun and ream. But the time when me do that, was only two gun them have. I take away Dennis Flyer gun. And I take away Rock Knot gun. Two of my friend them still, you know. Alright. I do this for Saturday night. And the Monday me I come from town and make a walk. The walk when I make, me I come up East Road now. So me I come through Rima. Them time the, the man them up a tree inside, sit down upon the fence. And me I come up, take with the gun them Saturday and I come up a walk. I don't have a gun, you know. I just walk past them still, car. I'm a place, you know. I'm a friend them still, you know. They take with them go and the psych. So when me, I walk, when me reach up a 7th Street, car Vikings now go, you know. So me, me go go to Ambassador. Yeah? Car Ambassador have two gates. One pan 7th Street and one pan Callison Drive. So the man, the Vikings man, them sit down out of walks yard in front of Callison Drive gate. So I come up East Road, cross 7th Street, but I mind say, let me, I mind say, look back us. So when I look back, a fisherman me see, you know. Stay so, a tip two, fisherman a tip two, a comb, fi come bust a shot in a me head back. You hear me say, fisherman a tip two by himself, a come up behind me, fi bust a shot in a me head back. And when me look round, and I say, fisherman, me take off, and fisherman start clap it. But no, no bite me, you know, so I just run left them. But by the time I run and come round on 8th Street, time just clap three pieces off of me and turn back. So by the time I go on 8th Street, I go see Stero, B, Man, and Sonny Buck. Them time they, that, that was the next team of man now, them man the blood. Had the blood team that the original blood team that blood Sonny Buck D Stero and Man Man them well fucking arms stuff. So when me run come round 
And man, him, I said, what happened? I said, I fish a man look why clap tree off of me. Right? Man, him, say, eh, come go down there. Lord, clap! The man, him, say, eh, come go down there. So, yeah, what I do now? I mean, I leave the squad, man, okay? I mean, them come and cut my skin. So, I go so bam, now and turn with the man, them now. And hear the walk over me now. F for those that you know the place, we go so bam, go back to bus, but come up on Thompson, Thompson Avenue, come up there, sir. come down um, Price Street, right? Come down to we, um, down to Parlor Gully there, come to Parlor Gully. Come on Girling Street, go over a Millsell Street that go over Millsell Street right there, so and then there's a lane now where you go to to carry back by East Road. So at night time, them time there, the man them sit down over the train light side in the evening. But night time them come back now and sit down on the other side. At the wall, up on the wall. So when we come to the lane, we come to the lane behind them. So, but through them time there, a cowboy time, we not shoot no man at them back. We don't know about that phone style nowadays. But when we, we come through, because we tip to a come through upon the man them. The man them sit down and them back turn to we. And we have two women tan. So we could have the blast them in them back half of the wall. But and so we play the game them time there. Cause we want them to say how we I do it. So what we do, we come up behind them and jump the wall and drop in front of them and then start bust up the shot. Remind them jump back over the wall where we jump over. And take with himself. So I saw the game play. And I shoot in the back. Right? And we just come up back east road. Go back to bus. And laugh. Like I know nothing. Because it was fun. Straight. It wasn't personal. It was fun. Because. Them time that's how we play the game you know. Real cowboy style. You see me I'm. Empty your gun, I'm not there. Tomorrow, me I come back down the road and see you. I empty my gun back. If it connect, it connect. I saw it used to go. But again, RIP fisherman, respect fisherman because me and fisherman, me and fisherman and dirt uh, and willow. Come here, them you they go in on and I like say. Them you there, I mean, in him, right now, turn him bread a low on the wall. I will go, how by um, cool it early. No, them you there, so seeing that fisherman, I do this man, I feel good, man, because you know, you ever say, when the guy not uh, I'm tear on the place, all fisherman get some of the things, them car. We never send in with no note, no forgive fisherman none. I wanna away. Mmm. Yeah, Mark Fallen. Yeah. Here the thing go now. And the way we call him fisherman. Call Mark Fallen fisherman. Fisher for a shot. Even before his feet touched the ground, Brian was shouting, Fisher! Fisher! Must be! Blood clot! You see, you hear that? Must me! You see that? You know what must me mean? Must me sell! And we do So we can't come airport your thing. Must me! Yeah! I saw me there. Must me! Boss me, always court phantom this now, you know, always court phantom. Yeah, phantom now. Phantom was shouting. Soon, most of us were shouting to fisherman to break our cell. 
door. Meanwhile, one of the few warders I had met in prison, a staff warder named Knight, was shouting to some goon outside Gibraltar to bring, bring the Remington. <laughs> bring the Remington. The rest of the goon had deserted their post in fear, leaving him. <laughs> My cry for a Remington. You see them turning the Remington a big gun. You see, in my time, Remington a big gun. Fisherman run to the bathroom at the end of the passage and return with a metal component of the toilet tank. Water Knight was still shouting to his co-worker to bring a Remington. Fisher was beating off the lock and Brian door all around the place whistle were blowing. After Brian was out, Fisher began working on Phantom Lock. Still water night was shouting away. Finally Phantom Lock was broken and then the Remington came as soon as it was in night and he turned it down to the passage and opened fire. The Remington is an automatic shotgun in such in close confine as a 13 feet passage. It is a dangerous weapon. Fisher, Phantom and Brian had taken refuge in the bathroom. Every time they open out, Knight cut loose with the shotgun. The pellet against the web of steel bars were like a guillotine in the hand of an obscene player as they recited all over the place everybody was lying on the floor cursing and issuing threat it was a standoff in fact it was more than that the gamble of the act was lost we did not have any hostage and they could keep the three brothers in the bathroom pinned down with that shotgun while they opened the gate and came down the passage for them and we in our cell could not do anything from the point on from the point onward we were at their mercy but they would not have any mercy in their business since the december hostage affair they had gotten no opportunity of vindicating their pent up feelings over the kick in the ass. Now the opportunity was here and they were not going to pass it up. The gunfire ceased as more and more goon armed with Remington gathered inside the cubicle at the end of the passage. For over 10 minutes after firing stopped, I wonder why they wait. Then the army and constable arrive. Soldier with automatic rifle wrench the building and mass with the cops and goon in the cover. It sound like muffled shots as tear gas was pumped down the passage. Then they came in while the gas suffocate us. A mass of khaki, grey, red, and black flood into the passage. As the mass of bodies went by my door, I saw that those in front were tear gas masks and were armed with riot button, cricket bats, and trapeurans shield. Seeing this a swarm of Babylon, the brothers came from the bathroom and held I in a sign of surrender. When the mass of bodies were some feet away from the prisoners, they broke and swarmed upon them. <sighs> Methodically, the soldiers, cop and goons went about beating the cans. Brian was the first to hit the floor on that torrent of blow.
the only pause to handcuff is on behind him before they resume beating the already unconscious Brian as he lay on the floor bleeding all over his face. Yeah. Court was next. First they beat him to his knee, making a bloody mess of his head and face. Then one blue seems one blue seam cap hauled him to his feet and shot him point blank in the chest with a pistol. You know why I'm do that? Sure. You know why I'm do that? He hear what them say? Pande true. They might beat him and a blue seam cap. Just try him gun and shoot him. You know why? You know why? Can I tell you no, but you know, you know, you know, I tell you no. Why him do that? Phantom, I'm a bridge in what I tell you, say. Go in a rumble. And bust a shot in our police and taking gun off him. So the blue seam there, a feeling the mark carry. Cause remember me telling you say we used to take with the blue seam gun them. Alright, cut him door. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. They then uncuff him as he lay unconscious on the floor. Fisher was fighting back. See that Fisher? Fisher now nah, give up a blood clot. Cause I remember a jealous yard. They made a carry Fisher, you know. So a day before the sun, you know. Cause the man had tell himself, say, nah, I'm the name. But what is good about this? Both Phantom and Fisher and Brian. Never get hang in the end. Now I tell the story in front of myself because you may know the thing. Sorry about that. Fisher was fighting back in desperation and they made a ring around him from all angles, blow poured down on him. Yeah. It's like me I get flashback. Remember me tell you when me take central. And Jazz Master come. And when Jazz Master come, him say, bring ass come. And when them bring me downstairs, they make me kneel down in front of Jazz Master. And them, it's like how the man describe it. And them way they, them made a rain down the, the button them for me. Button a meat button. Button a rock pan button. Yeah. Yet he was still on his feet fighting back. They beat him right to the gate where he had consciously overcome him and he buckled. All three were taken to the Spanish town hospital for treatment. Brian and Fisher was taken to the death cell to join Amsalan and Gail and Coates returned to the row bandage up like a mummy in the star of the 21st of March 1975 they reported the incident as an escape made by three condemned men <coughs> that afternoon we, we, we began sending our notes sending out notes message and telegram to the parent and relative and attorney of the four. Message were sent to the Jamaica Council of Churches, the Kingston Legal Aid Clinic, and to the Jamaica Council for Human Rights. Since the authority would not permit us to send out communication of this sort, it was done through pull via the grapevine. By the next morning, we had sent off some 36 notes and messages. Nobody ate any breakfast the next morning. By midday, only the 
Mannix and Khan in the hospital section were eating any food. The prison was locked down and only goon prowled the prison yard in twos and trees with guns concealed beneath their shirt. A petition demand a state of execution was pre prepared on the row and circulated through the prison before it was dispatched with hundred of signature to the governor general. The row was quiet. We had done all we could. The collective anger, frustration, desperation, escalating militancy of the prisoners that had always been present since December 1974 and now stimulated by the recent brutalities and the impending execution on the one hand and the collective determination of the goal to brutalize, oppress, suffer and vindicate their pent up craving for revenge and the other hand compound to produce an emotion packed community over which tension hung like a thick fog. A situation as potent as a bomb ticking, ticking towards a point of explosion unknown to any of us. Tick, 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 tick. In response to our notes and message, we were visit the next day by Attorney Ronnie Twitt, Richard Small, Dennis Daly, Noel Edward, QC, representing the Jamaica Council for Human Rights and the Kingston Legal Aid Clinic. We were assured after they had visit the four, the four that they would make representation to the commission for a stay of execution for them. For Alwyn Harry, Father Alwyn Harry also visit and assure us that even if he had to sleep at the gate of King's House, he would do so to get the four a stay. At a special sitting held at headquarters house, the Commission expressed their surprise and disquit at the development. We had no idea when we escaped the position that any execution would take a place take place at the St. Catherine District Prison before we ended in our report. We would not have uh, have accepted the appointment if we were aware of the possibility of this. Based on the representation of the attorneys, Father Harry, and their own feeling on the matter, the commission got a stay of execution for one week. The execution were rescheduled for the 2nd and 3rd of April in order to give the commission a time to examine the particular case of the four submit an interim report to the governor general one week <coughs> when the commissioner sat in the prison to begin such investigation of the four case we informed them that we would cease our appearance until there was something final on the four however we explained the brutality that had been shared out to Fisher, Brian, and Courts the week before and submit that the commissioner incorporate mention of the same in their interim report. With that, we withdraw and the commissioner went about investigating the case of the four.
On Thursday, the 1st of April, the Barnett Commission in the person of its secretary, Mr. Paul Dobson, Lieutenant Colonel Carl Jameson, present the interim report to the Governor General at King's House. Immediately, the Governor General summoned the Privy Council to study the report. That was the last official news we heard up to t Tuesday night. Absalom and Brian were scheduled to hang at 8.30 the next morning. About 10 that night, a goon came to inform us that the new hangman, Peter Lennox, had arrived in the prison, was brief and carrying out his job for the first time. Had a snack and retired for the night in his prepared bed in the goon changing room. This piece of news sent our hopes sliding further in the pit of pessimism and fear. Would they go through with the execution tomorrow? Would they get a stay of execution? Any card could be played and Brian held the deck. All we could do was wait, wait, and wait. Some brothers were reading their Bibles and chanting, waiting, and I slept. Before the sun came up, I was awake. Down the road, the brothers were still reading and chanting. They had gone through the night in chanting and prayer. When the sun came up, those who were not praying and chanting mount the ventilators to gaze outside at the morning. And like other mornings, the orderlies and trustee remain on the lock. I had a small transistor reader, illegal and the row, that I kept to my ear. 7.30 a.m., no news. 8 o'clock a.m., waiting. As the minute crawled towards 8.30, the row become quiet. The chanting and Bible reading had ceased and everybody anxiously listened for the sound of the bell that signal an execution, fearing, not wanting to hear it toll. 9.30 a.m., still no news. Something was amiss. Too far away we could hear the sound of Ray's voice coming from the front of the prison. The brothers down the line resume their chanting. 9.45 a.m. over the sound of the chanting, the sound of a thumping reached me. Someone was outside knocking on my cell. Back in a jiffy, I was on the ventilator. Freddy, Freddy, come the urgent whisper. Who that? I ask. A me, man. It was one of my reliable contributor to the grapevine. What happened? I ask. Shh. The word of them strike. Say what? Yes, man. Them gump and strike. To Amsalam them get steer. Them get still? I want to hear again. The news was too good to hear only once. Yes, man. The whole of them. You sure? Sure. They know. They know it. Me, I tell you, man. The whole of them get still. And the whole of them damp and strike. And say them now work if the man them no hang. Is where you, re you really are, sir. 
Yeah, man. This man in the whole of them come in with all them flasks and rum in a them pocket. And when the super tell them that the man them I get stay, man, he pause. Man, when the super say the man them hang, the most of them start cuss and go on bad and say them now nah work if the man them no hang this morning. Them up there now say them want to see Mr. Rat Tree. Them up there now a quarrel and a wait. They already sound of irate prisoners banging on the door in union demanding the morning and lock the gun them and downstairs and spread to the adjoining block. I'm going to move now. You hear, sir? Before them come down here. Yeah. See him? Cool, man. Cool. He was half and jump off the ventilator. He was half and I jump off the ventilator. The chanted had stopped. Bits of the conversation had reached them and now everybody was at their door and just to hear the news. The man them get a steer. Before I could say more, the row was in uproar. The Rastafari were shouting that it was Jaworks. While the Christian said it was the sign of Jesus Christ at work. The tension was broken, the bomb diffused, but the reality of the goon position loomed large in my consciousness. <coughs> what man of men were there that could call a work stoppage because their indecent and sadistic thirst for blood and murder was not satisfied? And what was it? in these men that gave rise to such inhuman craving for blood. It was generally understood that Amsalang and Brian were the victim of a police frame up. Gail was an ex cop. Their father Babylonian and fisherman had not gone done any of them any personal harm over his time on the row. So why did the goon want their blood with such intense craving? Why? And who would imagine that a modern trade union would call a strike because the members were perpetrated over the decision to grant the steer of execution to four men sentenced to death. Yet here it was, a living reality beyond a rational comprehension, a fact of our collective existence that served to keep alive the manual hostility between prisoners and the row and goon emphasize as correctional officers. The next week we took up where we had left off before the commission. Mysteriously, relentlessly, we kept at the task at hand, knowing that this was our final hope for justice through redress, that if we feel here many of us, especially the five representatives, would surely am. By then we were given a stationery and a ban on the Jamaican Constitution and the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, which had been imposed right after the December demonstration was lifted. The policy of organized antagonism directly at the assistant attorney by the goon 
a decrease on the pressure day after day um, with stock of notes and references we submit debated and expose the fact and reality of injustice denial of human and constitutional right inherent in the administration of justice as applicable to people of our class and us in particular not surprisingly though the goon were always cussing complaining about the function of the prison and their role they made no organized representation to the commission true they were repeatedly invited to do so by the commission they were content to grumble in the passage and await the opportunity of implementing their own point of view with wire buttons wire whip and knuckle dusters by the end of july we had covered every year of complaint and biscuit and brought our case to rest the corruption was exposed and the injustice itemized and categorized the grievances state and the cases explained now it was up to the commission and the government as we began to begin the long wait for the result of our effort as the day becomes weak and the week turn into months the relentless protected the goon were also anxious expectant for much had been exposed to the security of the commission to the scrutiny of the commission and none of them knew exactly how they were involved uh, whether they would come out smiling like rats or uh, like common goons among us there were also serious thought about the outcome of the commission's report i had done two years and ten months on the row the ill top brothers were there before me and so were Amsalang and brian many had come after us and had gone to the gallows and while we were certain that some of us would cheat the gallows we were also certain that babylon would hang some of us the thing was who only time and the governor general could tell one morning before breakfast i was dragged from my cell by five goons and promptly marched down for no apparent reason except as one goon said i was the ringleader of the rebellion in the prison i was relocated at a1 in an effort to break the struggle on the road the next day after a girlfriend of mine visit me the goon called in the police and an a person and car search outside the prison gate after the visit the next week i was told officially by the goon that for security reason all my visit with the exception of my attorney and spiritual advisor would be curtailed until further order the waiting was getting dangerous but as always we could do no more than but wait wait and wait yeah that was very emotional 
Yeah. I really I Dada. Yeah man, you know what I say I do know. How long ago there I just sent out a message about just a pick up on it, you know. Be in the phone I the whole phone I'm not too active pan. You know what I mean and Sometimes it's just dead and the battery all just run down and me even to turn it on and them thing that I'm just a chip in on it and I start to say they had to send out a message. Yeah. Yes, brother. Yeah, man, I overstand the eye clearly. See? Yeah, man, and I see him so it go, you know? And I said to the eye, likewise, I continue the good works so for the eye I do. You know, come and listen to the eye. You know, video them, and I see it on them. Very interesting. Yeah, man, we learn a lot. You know, because they are black some sound, you know, about even stuff before me born, and stuff when me was a little child, you know, kind of the 70s, you know, me a little youth, you know. You know, I see it, yeah, man, me a little, little bit of youth. I got a basic school and everything there. <laughs> and yeah, yeah, black so so there. You know, see, yeah, but some some so they were very interested. And when I was a youth, still enough of them things, they were there, yeah, black. When I was a youth, we used to hear them things that are some, some, some utterance that come across me years, you know, in regards to some of them things, you know, you know. Yeah, man. So, if you don't say, you know, the eye, you know, I see the eye as a one who, you know, who, 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 who preserve, you know, see it, become highlight certain things. Yeah, so the youth them can, can listen and learn and wise up. You know, see it, yes, I. I thumb it to the eye, so enough man has respect and heart and love to the eye. Fire and continue to keep up the good works. Rastafari. Greetings, my lion. I want the eye know, see, I see the eye all over the place and it's respect all the way through. I'm on, <clears throat> I'm on vice still a, still a rough of a vice, you know, as you can hear. But on any and everything, it's like how the eye jump and everything, and any and everything I man jump and you know, brother. Because some things not really bad eye. And I man certain things I can't do nothing about, so I just leave it alone. But it's a true I man that play a role in the crucial part of the development of the culture as a youth lion coming up. So is that I try to really make the youth them relate back to the youth them say it nah go carry them now so at some stage we have to give it up in order to progress in life. So I did some my thing there. You know, me, me, me just try to show the youth them uh, we aspire to be gangsters and rude youth that is that an easy road, you know? And I think that is where we need some help and structure. But keep up your good work still. I know, say, it's always love and respect. And feel free to touch I. I try to touch the eye just now, but I check set you the time different. The eye would have still either carry the youth go to school or do certain things. Cause I'm on past through them levels that already. I know, say, well, them hours are the day now. It's busy time for certain ones, you know? But love every time, my brother.